Hello, and welcome to another episode of After School Kids Lab. This week, we are going to be coding with Lego. <laughs> Every week, we post a fun video of us doing a craft, game, science project, or skill. And this week, we are going to have a lot of fun with Lego. Obviously, the first thing that you're going to need for this project are a bunch of Lego. Now, if you say Legos, that's okay, but I did learn that apparently the plural for Lego is Lego. Who knew? So in addition to Legos, you're also going to probably want to have some sort of flat Lego board, kind of like this one would be good. Maybe you have a table for your Legos, that would be great too. Also, for one of our projects that we're going to be doing, having a lot of these single stud Legos is going to come in handy. Today we're gonna to be doing two coding projects with Lego, but of course there are many other ones that you can find elsewhere. If you like coding, there's also lots of other coding projects that you can do without using Lego. But we hope that you like the ones that we're going to share with you today. Before we begin coding with Lego, we should probably answer the question, what is coding? Well, computer code is a set of instructions for a computer. Coders, as in real people, write this code. Computer code is what creates all of the apps, games, and websites you use every day. There are many different types of computer languages that make up code, but they all do a similar task, which is to turn our directions into a language a computer can read. The process of doing this is known as coding. One of the first computer languages you may have heard of is binary code. Basically, everything you see on a computer, including the one you are viewing right now, is made up of different combinations of ones and zeros. For our first Lego coding project, we will be practicing using the binary alphabet. I have created a table with the binary alphabet on it that you can access at the website linked in this post's description. It shows the eight digit binary code for each of the 26 capital letters in our alphabet. Once you have your binary code, you will want to find as many single stud Lego pieces as you can. Then you will choose one color to be your zeros and another to be your ones. Then figure out what you want to write with your Lego pieces. It might be best to write something short and simple first, maybe your name or your favorite word. Next, you could write down the corresponding binary code for each of the letters in your word or sentence. You may want to write a dot between your letters to keep them separate. Last, you will use your single stud Lego pieces to write the ones and zeros for each of your letters. You can place a space in between each letter if you want to. If you run out of the two colors you were using, like we did, you can switch to another two colors in your following letters. As long as each letter uses the same two colors, you can still read the code. When you are done, you can hand your Lego code off to another person to see if they can decipher or translate your code back into letters and words. This is a fun way to send secret messages to family members or friends. It's also a great way to do coding without using a computer. Our next Lego coding project teaches the basics of an algorithm. What is an algorithm, you may be asking? In the simplest terms, an algorithm is a sequence of actions that are strung together to solve a problem. We will be using the directions left, right, and straight to solve a Lego challenge. First, you need to find a Lego minifigure, or you can make your own Lego bot like we did. I made Benjamin Bot, and my helper made Betty Bot. Next, we printed off the algorithm coding game sheets, which are linked in this post description. The game sheets include two options for a grid and cards with forward arrow, right arrow, or left arrow symbols on them. Benjamin and Betty Bot's mission is to travel from the top of the paper grid to the bottom of the paper grid without landing on any squares that contain other objects. For each directional card, they move one square in the appropriate direction. If you can't print off the game sheets, you can always make your own using a writing utensil and paper. If you print off the game sheets, you can use the pre-made grid that includes obstacles. You could also choose to add objects to the blank grid like we did. Try to arrange your obstacles so that there isn't a straight path to the other side of the paper. Next, you can cut out your directional cards. If you end up making some complicated paths across your grid, you may need to print or make more cards. Now you're ready to begin writing your algorithm using the directional cards. 
you will choose a spot on the top of the paper to start and plot a route for your minifigure or bot one square at a time. You can choose to place out one card at a time as you move your character each square. Or for a more difficult version of the challenge, think out the sequence of your actions ahead of time and place out a string or stack of directional cards to show your program. You can even let another person read the directional cards and move your character across the grid to see if it works. Sometimes you will notice an error in your code, and that is okay. Computer coders have to adjust their code sometimes too. Fixing broken code is part of the coding process. Now it's time to ask some questions. After all, this is After School Kids or Ask Lab. First of all, what did you choose to write using the binary alphabet? Since Thanksgiving is coming up, maybe you could write thank you to someone you know. Also, did someone else write a message for you? Do you think it is easier to write or read binary code? Or maybe you thought both were about the same. With our second challenge, were you able to get across the grid at least once without making a mistake? Both my helper and I had to practice our coding skills a lot before we accomplished this. In what ways could we change this challenge to make it different or more difficult? Perhaps you could see who can find the fastest or straightest path across the grid. Perhaps you could add more obstacles on the grid. Maybe you could challenge yourself to move from one object to another object instead of just across the grid. There are so many ways this LEGO coding challenge could be played differently. What can you come up with? Last of all, what did you think of coding with LEGO? Are you making plans to be a coder in the future? Maybe you would like to design a video game or computer program when you are older. Or maybe you just really like any challenge that involves LEGO. I sure do. Remember, you can share a photo, video, or comment on our Facebook page. We would love to hear about all of your after-school kids lab experiences. We hope you enjoy coding with LEGO. Next week, we are going to be doing brain teasers and logic games. So until then, bye!